Hello everyone and welcome. Today I have an album project that I want to flip through with you. You can see it's a six by eight in front of me and I've loved putting this together and it's using the brand new May special called Dream Maker. This is a collection that as soon as I saw it, I knew that I was going to love it. But when I actually got it in my hands to look at the physical pieces of papers and all the other items that come with this collection, I just fell in love with it even more. I'm going to flip through the album and I'm I'm going to also show you some of the techniques that I've used with the stamping in creating these layouts. So I'm actually going to flip through all of these products here with you because I think they deserve a little bit of time to have their own spotlight before I show you what's contained within the album. So you can see the sticker sheet here. It has some gold foil treatments. I love all the wash and the texture that is on these stickers. Now by texture, it doesn't have to be a raised 3D type thing. All of the texture here is within the wash and the shading and the levels with the splatters and things like that on these pieces. It really is truly lovely artwork. There are two paper packs that come with this collection. There is a pattern paper pack and the coordinating cardstock. So you can see this is one side of the paper here and when you flip it over, this is the other side. And you can see why I fell in love with this. I love the wash of the colors across this. It's like this is a mixed media type page. There's light and shade with white coming through, different tones of the colors of these papers. And also like it's been stamped on as well with these words and the textures stamping as well. I love the leaves and the floral elements and on the other side of this paper there are the pink tones and then the script writing over this with the wash of color. I just think this is so pretty. This is a style of paper that a lot of us have been wanting for a long time. We've had this type of print in a PML type card like in a 6x4 or a 3x4 format and when we see those in the smaller format I'm one of those people that always wants it in a larger format. So close to my heart I've delivered with this. This is the other side of the paper. It's a gorgeous pink wash and I love the heart zip strip but the hero for me is definitely this print here. So you can use it this way, you can turn it on its side and use it this way. I love that the wash comes down with the graduating colors and then there's some splatter effects as well. This could be my favorite pattern in the pack but I'm not quite sure because I really love the ones that I just showed you. And then there's this gorgeous marble effect paper and it almost looks like it has a gold fleck through it in certain lights with the light and shade with the white and the yellow which is actually the Sundance coming through it. And the other side of this page is this gorgeous leaf pattern. This paper here is like a watercolor circle paper. And then there's some added texture with the elements of the splatters coming out. And there is a grid pattern behind this too. So it means the circles aren't just floating on the page. The light grid lines means that that anchors those circles. So that's rather gorgeous. And then on the other side of this is a dot pattern and it's not just a straight dot, there's light and shade with this pattern paper as well. And the patterns just keep going on. There's so much to love about all of this. So on one side of this sheet, there are the lines graduating from the periwinkle right through to the rosy colors. And you can see the other side of this is this gorgeous dot pattern here. And I love this, that's got the color wash on it as well. And this is a periwinkle pattern and it might be hard to see on camera, but there are a little white dash lines and that ties in with the stencil, but also it's got this gorgeous wash. So there's depth and light to this pattern as well. I love the cloud look to this. If you turn this this way, it almost looks like clouds. So this is a fun, whimsical paper as well. And the other side of this pattern is a lemonade grid pattern. And that's also got light and shade with it too. So that's the pattern paper for the Dream Maker collection. And then there's a coordinating card stock. So each of the coordinating card stock has this marbled effect on one side, which is a really gorgeous feature on a coordinating card stock. Rather than having just the plain card stock, getting this added little bit of texture just opens up more possibilities and it's a pattern paper all on its own. On the other side of this coordinating card stock is actually the solid color. So this is the ballerina. This will be rosy and I love the depth of this one and the swirl and everything and as you can see you get two sheets of that. 
This is the Sun Dance. Once again, this is double sided, so you can choose to use just the plain card stock if you like. But for me, this is really the hero, and I can always add Sun Dance plain card stock in. I'd rather use this side of it myself. This is the Glacier print. And Lagoon. I love how the details of this is all showing through so beautifully. And Periwinkle, which has a more purple tone. Gorgeous, gorgeous papers. Let's move on to the stamp set. This is an E-size stamp set, so you get two sheets. And you can see there's gorgeous titles and everything. The hero for me for this is actually these text stamps. If I turn it around this way, the words are going to go the right way. So this is a gorgeous text. You can stamp this just using your fingers instead of a block. So you just get light and shade with it. So it doesn't ink up the whole entire thing. It will run fairly well across a layout. And you can use it on a border strip, which I've done in this 6x8 album. You can see a line text stamp here and it's just not solid because of these added little details that really adds to the design and this one here is like a watermark so it's not a solid piece you will get texture with this as well as well as with this piece here that's reminiscent of the pattern paper that I showed earlier two different size florals a dandelion stamp another small text stamp with script instead of a typewriter type font and then two other little featured stamps that are great for sprinkling in amongst your layouts. I absolutely love this stamp set. So I'm gonna bring in the die cuts now and you can see the fineness with these. I'm going to push this one out because I just wanna show you this gorgeous circle and this is how they come. So with this, there's like four layers within this piece. You can use the circle piece, you can use this negative space piece here and then the heart also pushes out so you've got an outline heart and you've got a solid heart and i'll push out one of these dragonflies as well because it's just absolutely beautiful there are three of these so there's a large one a mid-size one and a smaller one there's some word art with lovely and then a script day and you can see there's a little tiny punched holes and lines on these so that shows up when you put it on your layouts lots of arrows hearts bursts some tabs as well and of course some leaves so this is a gorgeous black die cut set and it works beautifully with the textured type pattern papers and there's one more thing in this collection and that's a stencil so you can see how well this coordinates with the pattern paper there are the gorgeous leaves which somewhat replicate this pattern paper that we have so you can use those throughout the album as well to tie everything in together there are the circles some squares in a grid type fashion and also some diagonal lines so with this collection everything works so well together so I did want to spend some time showing that all to you so now I'm going to bring in the album and we'll do a flip through of the album and then hang around to the end of the video where I will do some stamping techniques now that we've looked at all the papers and everything that goes with the dream maker collection I'm going to do a flip through a quick flip through of the 6x8 album you can put everything together for this album with the 6x8 workshop kit that you can purchase. I'll put a link below just in case you want to check out everything to do with the Dream Maker collection. I've put together the 6x8 album following the workshop guide. It's got a full color cutting guide and instructions on how to put everything together along with the pre-stamping and how to do all of these gorgeous elements on the pages. So this is the first page. I love this stamp. There's some texture with this stamp as well. The letters actually have words over them. So this is first and actually second generation stamping and then stamped over the top with a little subtitle and then fussy cut out and popped up on foam tape. And with the cutting guide, it's all laid out so that you will get this particular part of the pattern paper in the right place. So if you follow that cutting guide, everything will be placed exactly as you need it for this front page. And it's quite similar on the back page as well because there's leaves and things there that poke out from the edges of this. So the cutting guide covers all that so that if you follow it, you can't go wrong with the position of the patterns on the papers. 
This, I think, is my favourite paper, as I said before. I love the black accents with the die cuts and all this multi-layered stamping and stenciling, which is throughout this whole workshop guide. And you'll notice as I flip through, I'm going to go a bit quicker as I go along, but I just wanted to point a couple of little features out. There's a bit of black pen work on all of the pattern papers, just around the outside, just freehand drawing. You don't have to get it all totally straight. You can see that my lines aren't totally straight, but it gives it a sort of an art journal type feel and that's also accentuated by drawing around the outside of some of the stickers and on the inside of the stickers as well so you get a double line and I love how the stickers work with the pattern papers and continue the color theme across this page this dot paper is absolutely gorgeous and I just want to show you there are some pocket pages within this but if you take that pocket page out you can see this is a double page spread so and this guide is quite flexible you can put the pocket pages wherever you like within the album or you can follow the guide exactly and do the order of the pages as you wish but of course you can change things up and you might want to put all the pocket pages at the end in a group and keep the double page spreads together. It's totally your choice, but I sort of like how this is like a little chapter with this feature paper throughout so that you know that if you're scrapbooking photos for this, this would be like its own little story where you've got multiple photos for this element here. It's very cute to have these little stickers in the middle of these three by fours. It gives it a very pocket card or picture my life card type feel and using the stickers again this is actually a 12 inch sticker so you cut up little pieces of those words to make their own little feature love this page so much there's a lot of stamping going along the side to add extra layers and the gold foil elements just look fabulous this is another one that has a pocket page insert with it. And you can see and this has got some stencil work with a couple of the stencils used and this text stamp. So this album has a very cohesive feel all the way through. This pocket page actually utilizes both the front and the back papers of this one cut because this paper is so gorgeous. So it's the same piece of paper back and front side of that to build up on this and some very clever ways of coloring these floral elements, which I'm going to show in the demonstration at the end of this video. Some more use of the stencils and multi blending with the Flamingo and Lagoon ink. They work really, really well together to give a freshness to this and don't don't underestimate the small little stamps in the set as well. This creates some great grounding points for the stenciling that's been used and also layering those up over top of each other. So this is second generation Lagoon and then Flamingo dots over the top. So putting them together makes everything look like it belongs. And I love how the white daisy ink looks on top of this coordinating cardstock. This is another one with a pocket page. So I'll just bring that aside so that you can see that and stamping over the whole entire piece of the pattern paper just to bring, I think, the Lagoon ink with the sticker strip that's going across here. This is the strip that I was talking about before that you can cut apart and use as little accents. The black detail around these mats look really good and having an offset mat rather than a traditional double mat gives you places to actually stamp more images or do some more journaling if that's what you wish to do. This is another pocket page as well. So this comes across like a rainbow order and then stamping over top of the whole piece once it's been put together with white daisy, lagoon, flamingo and black ink. I think it just brings everything together with all the layers of that. And then the little pocket pages are just so cute with these elements cut up into three by fours, stamped on and the placement of the two by two photos down in the center, which really brings your eye into the center of of this now I have to point out this sticker I think it might be my favorite one it's just one heart but I love the wash of color across it and I love how the stamping with this script text looks partially over the heart and onto the lagoon paper and then we're up to the last page which I briefly showed you before so I think it's a great album to flip through it would make a great gift it could be a travel album it could even be a special 18th birthday or something like that any sort of event or a collection of photos over the years of one subject. So I'm gonna put this aside and then we will get into the actual techniques with doing some of the stamping and stenciling on the pieces of pattern paper.
Thank you for hanging in there and watching all the way through for the mini album flip through. Now I'd like to show you some stamping techniques, which is gonna be some stamp layering and also some easy coloring of these floral images and also using the stencils as well. I just thought I'd show you, these are the inks I'm gonna use for this demonstration. I've got some blending brushes and I've got my stamp images all set up ready to go. So if you're doing a project like this mini album, it's really good to have everything set up and ready to go with it. One thing that I do want to mention is that Close to My Heart are running these workshops as live events in July. So in America, it is July 10, 12th and 14th. In Australia or the Southern Hemisphere, it will be July 11th, 13th and 15th first thing in the morning but you'll be able to go back and watch them at any time because they will be recorded. I'll put a link below to the events page for Close to My Heart so you can find these easily and click going so you don't miss out. Each event will be a separate project so there'll be one for the scrapbooking workshop, there'll be one for the card making workshop and then there'll also be one for the mini album which I just flipped through earlier for you. So I'm just going to put all of these aside for the moment and I'm going to show you an easy way to color in these flowers. The first thing that you want to do is stamp the background areas. So on this stamp set, there are two watercolor type images. So what I'm gonna do is ink up with first generation Flamingo first. And it doesn't matter if you don't get a perfect impression each time because this adds to the fun and the texture of the floral elements once you've stamped them. So this gives you a good look at what these stamps actually look like when you stamp them out. I'm just gonna clean off these blocks and then we're going to do the same treatment in Lagoon. Now, what I like to do once I've cleaned my blocks off is also stamp them off onto some scrap paper just to get rid of the moisture in case there's any moisture from the chamois. So I'm going to come in with Lagoon ink and I'm going to do first and second generation stamping so that you can see the different effects that you get with this. So first generation and then second. And same with the other stamps as well. First and then second. Now you can do this with Flamingo ink as well, but it shows up better on camera with just the Lagoon. And now I'm just gonna come in with black and stamp my floral elements. And I'm going directly over the top of these images here that I've stamped and I'm purposefully not trying to get my floral element totally within this section. I want there to be some light and shade because I am going to fussy cut these out and I don't want a totally solid amount. So you can rotate the stamp so that each time you cut one of these floral elements out and you can see I actually moved it there. So I've got some shadow stamping going on. You can see that you can get a totally different look to all of the flowers just by rotating the stamp. And I can do exactly the same thing on this blotched watermark type image here. And I want to get that detail from the splatters, but I am gonna keep rotating this so that it's a little bit different each time. I just love this sort of cheats way of coloring in. So that I can do with my large florals. I can actually do this onto this line and splatter type one as well to get a more delicate look. But this one's a really good size. This little background piece here is a really good size to fit two of the smaller florals on. So it's like you only have to stamp the background once and you can definitely do that for these as well. So the larger images, you could get a couple of treatments. I'll just stamp another one of them so that you can see. I'll do it in Lagoon because I haven't quite cleaned off my block. So there's the first generation and the second generation. And then I'm gonna bring in that smaller floral element and I'm going to position this around so that I get some light and some shade, and then I can fussy cut these elements out. Now 
Now this one, I had a bit of ink captured down in this area and that's come out a little bit darker, but that's okay because when you look at floral elements, they're not always totally perfect. You can use that to your advantage. And I love having this artistic type approach where it's just partially colored as well. So I think this gives a great effect so you don't have to actually sit there and color these in with your tri-blends or your watercolor pencils or whatever coloring medium you use. And you don't have to worry about shading and all that sort of thing because you get all of this cool effect with where there's splatters, some lines and some drops and even even some highlights on the petals. The next quick little demo I wanted to show you is how to build up some layers with the leaves, these other stencils, and also with some stamping. I'm just going to move my Versamat off to the side because I'm going to go off the edge of this a little bit. But what I want to do is layer up some leaves using both Flamingo and Lagoon. Now, I know leaves are not generally pink and blue, but the whimsy and the gorgeous colors in Dream Maker means that you can do them with whatever colors that you like. So what I do with this is just start off with Flamingo. Now, if you're looking at this, you can see I've got a pattern already, a piece of pattern paper already adhered to this. And this is one of the patterns in the mini book, the 6x8 book, but I decided to adapt it to a 12x12 12 and I wanted to show you how you can achieve the same look on a 12x12 12 12 piece as what you can on the 6x8 album. And I think I'm going to do a few more in this series, so stay tuned because I've got the mini album, but I also know that I want to use some of these patterns from the 6x8 into a 12x12 12 12 format. What I'm going to do is start off with Flamingo ink. I need to bring in some copy paper so that I can just brush off a little bit so things aren't too bold when I'm doing this. So I'm picking up the ink and then I'm taking it off and I'm lightly going over the top tips of each leaf. Now I haven't put down any of the masking tape or anything like that. I'm just holding this in place and going over. And if I forget to brush that off, that's okay. This is totally a personal choice on how deep you want the colors to be. And I'm gonna bring in Lagoon. And this one, I really do want to brush off quite a lot of the color here. And then I'm gonna go up into that pink area that I just did with the Flamingo. And you can see how that's giving a lovely blended look with two colors that you might not always feel like they go together when it comes to leaves. But when I take this away, it gives an absolutely beautiful look to that. So I'm gonna continue on and do some more of these leaves on a couple of other areas onto this layout. And then I'll be back to show you the stamping that I'm gonna do. So you can see I've done the leaf stenciling here. I'm actually going to do some more stenciling and layer this up a little bit more before I do the stamping. I'm going to come in with the dots and whatever I do to one of these leaf sections, I'm going to do to all of them. I'll just move my pink brush out of the way so I don't pick it up by mistake. I'm wiping off a lot of this Lagoon ink. I do not want a heavy hand with this at all. I'm rubbing over quite gently because I know that I can actually add more if I want to. And I do need to press a little bit heavier so that I can see the dots coming out. I'm hoping that's picking up on camera for you. I'm doing it quite gently. I'm sticking mainly to the leaf area, but I'm also spreading it out a little bit so that it goes outside that leaf area as well. I'll just bring that down. Now, I've got a smear here of Lagoon. One thing I should know better to do is put my ink pad down on top of my project. This has been used over the weekend by quite a few people at workshops. So there's a bit of a mess there, but that's okay because I'll be able to cover that up with a photo that I'm planning on putting there later. So here we go with a few more of these Lagoon dots. And then I'm gonna come in with this diagonal stripe pattern and I'm going to put some of that over top 
of where these leaves are and then I'm graduating back into the edge. So I'm actually curving it around like this so that it's not all the way across in a flat line. So just a little bit more down into that section. And you can see this is building up some gorgeous layers with the stenciling. I'm trying to keep everything on camera for you. I'm going over towards the edge of the paper here and then I'm bringing it out this way. It doesn't all have to be in a corner like this. I just don't want it to have clean edges or definitions to these striped elements. So that's looking quite good. And then I'm gonna do this piece here. As I said before, anything that I do to one of these areas, I'm going to do to the others with the leaves. So I'm layering up my stencil pattern. I've layered up the leaves, the dots, and this diagonal stripe. And now I'm going to layer it up even further with some stamping. Before I start stamping, I'm just gonna bring this up so you can have a bit of a closer look. You can see here, I've got the dots over the top of the leaves and also the diagonals as well. And I think that adds a beautiful layer and you can leave it just like this. But I wanted to show you how you can enhance it just that little bit more with some stamping. I'm going to bring in this text stamp. I'll stamp this off so you can actually have a look at what it looks like. I'm going to do my stamping in black. And this is a text stamp that I'm very excited to see in the Close to My Heart range. And with the Dream Maker collection, it's just one that I know that I'm gonna use again and again and again, not just for while this National Scrapbooking Month special is on. I love this text and I want to introduce this to my pages. Now, I'm not gonna stamp off with this. I'm gonna use the True Color of Black, first generation with my stamping but I am going to protect my areas a little bit because I know I'm going to stamp off and I don't want to get black ink all over my Versamat. And by stamping off for this, I mean I'm going off the edges. So I want an image up here in this corner and this is adding another layer. So not only am I doing stencil layers, I'm also going to be doing stamped layers. This one I've brought in a little bit further than that. And I'm just going to go over to this side here and have some coming up for this area as well. And I've already done the base layer on the left side of this and I do have some stamping. I'll just bring that in. I do have some stamping in this area here. So I want to bring in some of this text into that area. I'll just bring that back in so I can sort of line it up. I don't want it to be absolutely perfect and mirror all the way across. I want each of these to be just a little bit different. So that's all the black ink I'm gonna use. Now I'm gonna start building this up a little bit more. I'm bringing in Lagoon ink and also this image here, I'll stamp this off onto my scrap piece of paper so you can see which one I'm using. This one with the lines and the drips and everything, but I'm not going to use first generation Lagoon. I'm gonna stamp off and then stamp onto my piece. And I'm going to do this a couple of times on each of these text areas. So it's the same principle. Whatever I do to one area, I'm going to do to the other. So you can see I'm going off here. I'm going off the edge of my page, bringing in some more texture to these clusters of stenciling and stamping. And I forgot to stamp off on that one, so you can see that is a little bit richer in colour, but that's okay. This is a look of layers, so I'm not going to start all over again just because I have messed one of these up. The next thing I'm going to bring in is this tiny little dot. Now, don't underestimate the small images in your stamp set. You can see this creates a gorgeous little watercolour look circle. So I'm going to stamp off and then stamp onto my page. And I'm doing several of these in each section. And it sort of brings in the circles that I was creating before. And I'm going to use this 
to put an extra layer of flamingo ink on as well. I'm going off the edge of the leaves, down on the edge of the piece of paper, making sure that I stamp off first and then onto my page. So that bit's done. Now I'm going to bring in Flamingo ink and there's another tiny stamp in this stamp set and it's just got like some water splashes. So you can see that there. If I stamp off again, it's a very, very light treatment, the Flamingo. So for this one, I'm going to do this over top of all of those little splatters that I just did and I'm doing first generation. So wherever I've put one of those larger circles that I've just stamped, I'm going to put these speckles. And I'm rotating my stamp so that it's not exactly the same each time and so that the positioning is not on the same area of the circle. So this is like stamp clustering. I know I have another one. It's down there. And you'll probably see it a little bit better on this area where the white is. And you can now see how all of this is coming together as a base layer for my layouts. And then I can go ahead and I can fussy cut out some of these floral elements to add as well. I just love how you can build up all the layers with the stamping and the stencils and make everything look so cohesive. Before I go, I just wanted to show you what the florals look like when they're fussy cut out. And you would have seen that in the album when I flipped through. But to just see them here are against the black of the back side of the Versamat gives you an idea of the light and shade you get just with one stamped image and then stamping the floral element over the top. I want to show you a couple of quick little things just with tags. You can do this on layouts, you can transfer it onto cards as well, but just by using this gorgeous script you can make some gorgeous tags for gifts and you can also dress up your scrapbook pages with these as well. So I've just used that one tiny little script. I'll stamp it here so you can see it in better detail. It is almost like a French script. It doesn't actually say anything at all, but it gives you an idea of what that little stamp looks like once you start building it up on layers onto the gorgeous coordinating cardstock. And also it works really, really well on the pattern papers. Now I've just opened the Flamingo ink. I'm going to do some tone on tone stamping with the floral elements straight onto the tag. And you can see how that is picking up the colors and giving a lovely soft decorative look to that. I'll show you what it looks like in the lagoon. So you can either do a second generation, but that might be a little bit pale for this strong pink color here but I can also put a lagoon floral on here and rotate it around and build up the layers for this. So you can see I'm going over top of where I did that inking just before with that stamp and how gorgeous that looks. And then I can bring in the smaller floral as well if I want to and just add a couple more little elements there and layer them up. So that's quite quick and easy to do. I haven't done any white daisy stamping on this video but I'll just show you what it looks like and how easy it is to use but just know that this is a pigment based ink so because the white daisy is a pigment ink it does take longer to dry so I'm just going to stamp this onto this tag and now you can see the gorgeous effect that has using the white daisy. Now there are three ways of drying this. You can set it aside to dry. It stays wet for quite some time. You can use your heat gun on it or if you have clear embossing powder, you can use clear embossing powder on that and heat set it and it will bring out the white. So I didn't want to actually do that on camera right now because obviously it would take drying time. As always, I'll have links below to everything that I've used today. These gorgeous papers are now available. You can see I've done some tone on tone stenciling here. 
So you can see the difference with these two. I've just used the circle, the dots stencil, and I've got pink on top of pink, so flamingo over the pink areas, and lagoon over the blue and green, and a little bit into the yellow area as well. There are so many possibilities that you can do with all of these products, the stamp sets, the stencils, the gorgeous papers, and all of these are available to purchase during National Scrapbooking Month, which is May, but also into July as well, as long as stocks last. So I'll put a link below where you can look at all of these products online. Thank you so much for hanging in there with me while I went through all of the show and tell on the 6x8 album, and also a little bit of a demonstration on what you can do with the stamp sets, layering up stencil and stamp images, and creating some really unique projects. You can transfer all of these ideas into cards, 12x12 12 12 albums, 4x4 4 4 albums, gift tags, and of course the fabulous mini 6x8 album project. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you next time. Happy crafting and bye for now.